You have never seen, nor will you ever see, a miter saw station like this. Mortise and tendon joints and lap joints on the frames on both sides, absolutely no screws. Strong as possibly can be. I've got a metal frame around the tabletops on both sides. Haven't seen that anywhere before. I used two different kinds of drawer slides for this, and guess what? I didn't like either one of them. I'll tell you about that as we go through the build. Got metal door handles here, which are cut out of an aluminum angle iron. I've got a dome-shaped dust containment for the miter saw table. I've got in-track uh, placement here for the stops, which gives me all kinds of table space on both sides. I've got a four inch pipe dust collection for the miter saw, which you can't see, but you will see in the bill. And I'll just tell you, spoiler alert, the dust collection and containment part of this bill, I'm going to show in the next video. But don't worry, it's coming out really soon. It was just too much content to put all in one video. So as I always say, hey, let's get started. I'm tired of talking about it. Well, as you can probably tell, I started building this in my old garage on an old jury-rigged miter saw table. I knew I wanted a new one for my new shop, but the shop was not done. In fact, I think I started this almost six months before I could move into the shop. I just knew what I wanted to do. I knew where I wanted it to go and how big I wanted it to be. So why not go ahead and get started? Well, hey, I finished cleaning up these two by fours. They look a little bit nicer now. Ready to build the legs for my miter saw table. And this is a great opportunity to try some techniques on these versus on a nice piece of wood. So I'm gonna try a few different things here and see how it turns out. Well, you noticed I used two by fours to build these frames. I did that with my assembly table as well. Pretty happy with how those turned out. It's certainly cheaper than buying four by fours, that's for sure. And it gave me an opportunity when I built these frames to practice some different techniques on them. Now, I could have built some cabinets. I, I've seen a lot of cabinets built for miter saw tables. I just wanted to do something that was a little bit different. And it gave me an opportunity to practice a few things that I might want to use in the future. To practice lap joints and mortise and tendon joints on these frames. Were they absolutely necessary? No, not at all. I could have used screws to put this thing together, but uh, hey, I wanted to try something different. Put the, the decorative slots in the top of this and angled the legs. Was any of that necessary? No. But was it worth practicing and trying just to try something different to see how I like it and maybe use it in the future? Yes. And tapering the legs, I did those on the table saw with my angle sled. I could have easily done those on a joint or a band saw, but I wanted again to try a different technique in cutting those. I did buy a tapering jig from my router a few months ago, and I think it will be kind of interesting to play with. I've got to build a a frame for it as well to hold it and uh, probably get around to that this fall and maybe I'll do a couple of videos we'll see how it turns out it's a very old tool but I think it's an opportunity to try some different things again which I really enjoy doing Got a coat of my special black paint on the big uh, frame. 
Now I'm actually ready to build it out into shelves. About a year ago, I ended up buying an inexpensive welder, and I kind of played around with the idea of trying to be more proficient at welding. I've done a number of small projects around the house, but I kind of wanted to try something for the shop, and the only thing I could think of was welding up a couple of frames for these tabletops on my miter saw table. So, hey, that's what I did. They turned out okay, they're not great, but I kind of like the way they look. Um, not the most practical thing to use for a miter saw table where you want things absolutely perfectly flat. I had to do a lot of adjustments to make sure that was okay. Um, I probably wouldn't do it again in the future. And in fact, I may take these tabletops out and put something totally different in. A lot of people use melamine or a laminate over uh, plywood. That's probably a more standard way of doing it. I ended up using a Baltic birch wood with a track built into it for my stops and uh, just put a number of coats of a clear coat of polyurethane on top to protect it. We'll see how it lasts over time. I, obviously I like the way it looks and it's very sturdy, but again, I'm not sure it's the most practical thing. With the move to the new shop and the assembly and outfeed table stationary, the end that the planer was coming out of wouldn't be able to come out anymore. So I decided to move it, put it under the miter saw. And I built this little cart to, to do that with. I reused the platform that the planer was on before and I reused the slides that I had with it. The, the slides are three, rated for 300 pounds, so I thought the slides were great to reuse. I wish I could have tucked this thing back a little bit more, but because of the way I designed the table and I wanted the frame to be a lot more narrow so that I had walking space in the garage, the planer stuck out a little bit more than I would like, but functionally it works great and I'm happy with that. And you'll see me using it here later in the video. It's a very tight fit on this side and on that side, but I like the fact that I've got it in a small space. I do wish I would have been able to get it back further, but it's already against the wall. It's just the fact that the table depth could have been deeper, but in a small shop, I really didn't want to do that. I can easily pull it out got full use of it. I can work on the top here without any trouble. 
and put it away in a, a moment's notice. I'll utilize the dust collection right here. And the reason I didn't bring it up higher is because I've got a four inch dust pipe for the miter saw right behind it at the top level. I'm gonna put a, a face plate on here to cover that up. So. Well, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know by now I'm cheap. I definitely like a good bargain. I like to save money. Just about all the tools in my shop I bought on Facebook or Craigslist for a fraction of the new cost. And when it comes to building furniture, it's the same kind of thing. I like to reuse the hardwood or plywood or hardware anywhere I possibly can in an effort to save some money. Some of these things I've rebuilt three, four, five times into different tools or projects. And there's no exception on this cabinet I'm building to store my tools. A piece of plywood came out of a storage unit I built in the garage. A shelf came out of a, a outfeed table I bought with a table saw off another guy. The frame that goes around, the face frame that goes around the front of this cabinet uses three different kinds of wood, a couple of them from different projects. So I just finished cutting the wood for the drawers that I want to put in the miter saw table. These are fairly wide. They're about four feet wide and maybe 14 inches deep. And I like to cut my drawers where I put a little notch in them like that. So when I match up these pieces, if I can do this with a four foot piece, there we go. I get a nice clean fit right there in the corner. And then uh, when I put a face on this, you don't see that edge. And on the side, you see a nice clean sides. And I wanted to talk for a minute about some of the slides that I purchased. These slides I bought on Amazon. They're rated 4.3 out of 5, which isn't bad. Quite a few ratings. And I got them in the mail. And um, unbelievably flimsy. So I really don't know if they're gonna hold up. I've never seen slides this flimsy before. Now, I paid $18 for two pairs, so that's what, nine bucks a piece? And normally I buy these hominy slides. They're much more, they're much heavier than this. They don't flex, but they're 14 bucks a pair for the same 14 inch slide. I'm gonna put these in, try them. Um, I do have my concerns about them. We'll see what happens. We'll see if they hold up. Okay, I got the drawers in. They slide pretty good. You know, for a four foot span, the, the slides aren't too bad. We'll see how they wear long term. And I gotta put the faces on so I can pull them in and out. That's the next step. I added a shelf down here. This was uh, Again, leftover scrap wood, just like the base of this cabinet. Now, if you've gotten this far into the video, you realize it's a long video. This is probably one of the longer ones I've done. I spent months working on designing and building this miter saw table. I probably put too much content, too many features in it because it took me forever to build and it took me forever to shoot. I left a lot of video on the table on this one because I just couldn't fit it all into this video. And in fact, the dust collection portion I'm going to release a week after this because I've just got so much content. So I apologize for that. I wanted to do the build, so I don't apologize for all the detail in the build. But I apologize for the fact that it's so long, and I wish it wasn't. I just, there are just things that I felt like I couldn't cut out. So, if you're into it, you're listening to this, I'm glad that you're watching and listening. And I hope I don't do another video that's quite so long in the future.
Now I tried a couple of different things on these drawers and doors. Uh, putting the doweling in the end with a dissimilar kind of wood, building the handles out of aluminum, and adding a little cutout for the handles just to make it look a little more interesting. I kind of like the way it looks. I wanted to do something different. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but hey, this is where I ended up. So let me know in the comments. Do you like it? Do you hate it? It's okay. I can take the heat. I, uh, I don't know if I'll build them again like that, but uh, I think I'll have these for a long time. They turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. So I don't see any need to pull them off and build new ones unless uh, I've got a really cool design that I want to go build. All right, that's it for today's build, but let me take you through a little tour of the details of this build. Let me start with the planer cart here, which I really like. I like the way it came out. I've got locking uh, slides here, which I actually pulled out of another table, and I can fit a board right here flat so I can run pieces through and eliminate some of that snipe. And underneath it, I have a little piece that I can fit right on here so I can take my dust collection from my miter saw and put it onto my planer, which is really nice and makes it work out well. Probably the only thing I wish with this is if I could tuck it back a little bit further, but that's not the part of the design of the table that I set up. Now the table itself, I love this metal trim on here. I think this is going to give me a long life on this and this integrated track for my stock and on the frame legs I put a little bit of detail in there so come in a little closer and I'll show you. I put some detail towards the top here and I tapered the leg itself really to just give it some visual reference and be able to tuck it back a little bit because hey this is a small shop and then I, on this side I put storage. So down below, I've got cabinets for and shelves for all of my small tools. I like to keep my power tools kind of tucked away, the, the small ones. And then I've got two drawers right here that um, I'm going to end up putting hardware in both of these drawers, the top one and this bottom one. And look, this bottom one is full of tools, and this is actually a future video coming up. I'm going to make a... French cleat wall for these, and it's going to be very unique. 
Anyway, like the way that came out. I don't like the slide design, but hey, not, not everything's perfect. I also have some storage underneath the saw itself and a drawer underneath it. I'm still trying to figure out what to put in this drawer, but that's a good problem to have. And then I've got the dust containment solution itself, and I don't have a vacuum underneath because I'm using my dust collector for this with that forage pipe that comes out the side. But this is a future video that's coming out very soon within a week or two, so hang on for that. So hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really enjoyed the build. And if you like today's video, please hit like, I would appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe to my future channel, uh, future channel videos, please do that and hit subscribe. And hey, I'll see you next time. This is Dave with Level Up Woodworking.